been, Sheriff? In the world up above. But I'm back now, just in time, too, for the children's corner. When I'm sitting around with my homework all done and there's nothing to do, I call all of my friends, they don't answer the phone. Where have they gone to? Where do you go? Good move, Mr. Dill. Oh, hey, everybody. How you doing? And welcome to the town of the Children's Corner, located in the world of the Magical Couch. I'm Sheriff Stephen J., the Sheriff of Slouch County. And I'm almost finished with my shift over at the Sheriff's Office when I was kind of slow and I thought, well, let me just come over to the house for a minute, take a little break. And I decided to have a game of checkers with Mr. Dill. When I'm done here, I'm going right back over to finish it up. But anyway, uh, I'm kind of excited because today is the first day of me eating healthy. That's right. At least, try and eat healthy. Well, anyway, I was researching what kind of food can I eat that's healthy. And I discovered fish, which I love to eat, is healthy for you. And uh, I was looking around on what kind of fish, and well, there's a lot of fish. Well, mackerel's good for you. Wild-caught salmon and wild-caught anchovies are good for you, as a few examples. So, I'm excited about that. But while I was researching what kind of fish I can eat, I ran across a fish I've never heard of before. It's called an alewife. And that's spelled A-L-E-W-I-F-E. -E. Alewife. You find them on the East Coast. They've been coexisting with other native fish and wildlife for thousands of years. But they live in the ocean and they swim through streams to freshwater lakes to spawn. They have these slender bodies and are grayish green on their back and silvery on their sides and belly. And they've got a single black spot just behind their eye. And they have forked tails. They normally grow to 10 to 11 inches in length and weigh about a half a pound. However, repeat spawners can be as large as 14 inches and weigh a pound or more. Now, you know, I read about these alewives and it reminded me of a time I was in the world up above and I stumbled upon a town called Nobleboro, and they had a place there called Damariscotta Mills, where to this day, the alewives enter the Damariscotta River in late April from the ocean, and arrive at the beginning of their spawning climb to Damariscotta Lake in early May. Now, as these alewives begin their run upstream to the lake, they have the pleasure of experiencing the fish ladder. Now, let me go back and explain what this is. Way back in the year 1729, when the towns of Nobleboro and Newcastle were settled, they built a double sawmill at the head of the falls between freshwater Damariscotta Lake and the tidal headwaters of the Damariscotta River. Now, the dam they built for the sawmill, it blocked the passage from the tidal headwaters where the ocean meets the freshwater to the Damariscotta Lake. So the alewives, they couldn't get to the lake to spawn. Now, people were upset about this. So a law was finally passed in 1741 to open up a passageway for the fish so they could get to the lake. It wasn't until 1807, though, that the two towns built what was called, at that time, the New Stream, but is now known as the Fish Ladder. Now, this Fish Ladder, it has stone walls ranging from 4 to 12 feet high, with the walls backed by concrete and drainage to ensure that it will remain strong for the years to come. And to this day, you know, they're, they're still, they repair it all the time and they, they fix it up. Now, it also has 76 resting pools, okay? And these are separated by weirs. And these weirs are just low dams built across the stream to raise the level of water upstream. So it keeps going up and up and up and up, kind of like locks, I guess. But each of these weirs they rise 8 to 10 inches between resting pools. It is here at the weirs where the alewives push upstream from one resting pool into another. Now, you got to see them do this. I, I, I watched them doing this. I, I recall this now, and it was just amazing. They go up a weir, then rest in the adjoining pool, right? Okay. 
Then they go up the next weir and rest in that pool and so forth and so on until they finally enter the Damariscotta Lake. Now their total climb up the ladder is eh, 42 feet from the bay to the lake. After the alewives spawn, the newborn fish stay in the lake until mid-July through early November. During that time, they'll swim to the ocean in large schools, typically backing down the ladder rather than swimming head first. These uh, juvenile alewives will spend three to four years at sea before maturing fully, and then they'll return to their birthplace, which is Damariscotta Lake, and they'll spawn. Now, they may spawn two or more times, as long as they survive getting eaten by other fish in the sea, of course. And the ones that survive and do spawn two or more times, those are the ones that grow like 14 inches and over a pound. Now, the alewives have been caught or harvested at Damariscotta Mills since the early 18th century when the area was first settled. The harvesters, they kind of cheat. They kind of take advantage of the fact that the large schools of fish are sitting at the bottom of the ladder preparing to make the climb. I mean, they're just sitting there. So a portion of the schools, they're crowded over to what's called the dippers. And there are two of these dippers. And what happens is the dippers will have the fish and they'll uh, go up on hydraulic. We'll push it up like this and they slide down. It's like a chute. And they all go down here and they land on top of a conveyor belt. And the conveyor belt will take the fish and bring them over to these big bins. And the fish just drop them in. I mean, it's crazy. All these fish just dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping. It was a, really a bizarre thing. And I, I remembered all this when I started reading, you know, about fish and what's an alewife. Never heard of an alewife. I didn't realize those were alewives I was watching at the time. Then I remembered it. Very interesting. Well, I thought it was interesting. So anyway, I'm just, I guess I got to head over and finish my shift. I only have a few minutes, so I go over there and finish up the sheriff's office. And I got a whole day ahead of me, and um, I, uh, I win. Meet you at the sheriff's office. All this talk about fish distracted me. I think I'll go take a nap. Alvin Chef Scott, how you doing? Hey, have a seat. I've been great. How about yourself? Well, I've been keeping busy. You know, I don't think I've seen you. Wow, it's been a long time. I, I think the last time I saw you was, well, when you were making popcorn over to the house. That was a long time ago. That was a very, yeah. very long time ago. That popcorn came out great. It did. I remember that. You, you were happy with yourself. Oh, I, I, was, I was surprised. It was delicious. And you put just enough oil to cover the bottom of the pan. And we're going to start the fire. That was probably about a half a cup. And you can hear it popping. Now we'll give it a shake. We'll take it off the fire. And look at that. Now that's some nice popcorn. So tell me, what brings you this way? My feet. Ah! <laughs> your feet! He made it funny. <laughs> your feet, I like that. No, really, I know you have a busy schedule and all, and just, you know, I feel kind of honored that you stopped by, but uh, what does bring you this way? Well, I had a break in my schedule, and then I was just walking up the street, and suddenly a word of interest came to mind. A and I just had to come and tell you about it. Really? Wow, and what mightn't that word of interest be? Anadromous. Anadromous. I gotta say, throughout the years, you alphabet chefs have taught me a lot of words. But uh, I don't believe I've ever heard of anadromous. What exactly is anadromous? Anadromous. A-N-A-D-R-O-M-O-U-S. Anadromous. It's an adjective to describe fish that migrate from the ocean, up rivers, to spawn. You mean like an alewife? An alewife, they live in salt water, and then they'll go upstream in the fresh water, and they'll go to a freshwater lake, and they'll spawn or have their babies. That's right. Some people catch alewives to smoke them, to eat them, but they're a very bony fish. They were used primarily for bait. Uh, the lobstermen love using them. I, was, uh, I really was thinking something more on the lines of salmon. 
salmon. You know, that would be an anadromous fish. Because salmon, they live in the ocean. And then when it's time to spawn, they swim upstream in the freshwater rivers. And then they go to a freshwater lake and also have their babies. And I love salmon. Well, what time does your shift end? Well, just by coincidence, we get a lot of those around here. I happen to be getting off pretty quick. Well, I was thinking about going over to your house and preparing you some salmon. I just happen to have some right here. Oh, no, 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 it's okay, it's all right. <laughs> we don't want to be pulling out any salmon and making the uh, sheriff's office smell like fish now, do we? All right, have it your way. See you at your house. All right, I'd be looking forward to it. Oh, I can hardly wait. I love salmon. Pay attention here. You got it. All right, I'm going to need you to do a little bark. Riff, riff, riff. And another. Riff, riff, riff. Very good. And we're going to finish off here with a growl. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Sounds good. Black bark taught me that one. One eye, can you hand me that there uh, otoscope there? We're going to take a peek at your ears. A what? Otoscope. It's the ear tool there on the end of the table with the uh, silver handle. Yep. All right. Just a minute. Be right back. Ah. Okay. All right. Here you go. Oh, perfect. All right. Ah. All right. We're just going to take a peek down here in your ear there. Uh-huh. That looks good. Huh. The other side here. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. What oh, boy? Ear me... mites. Ear mites. Ear mites? Ear mites? Yeah, yeah. Oh. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need you to hand me the uh, hydrogen peroxide there and those cotton tip applicators. There are two of them. In that, that bottle? Yep, and put this back. All right. Thanks. Right back. Yep. That looks good. So what kind of salmon is this? This is sockeye salmon. Which nice. is what a, the pant or the thing over here you can put that in. Yeah, right there. Most of the salmon we're used to seeing is usually eastern Atlantic salmon. Uh, sockeye salmon get very, very large and they also get very, very oily. So most of the sockeye salmon that are really big fish are used mm -hmm. in the cannery. So they'll can them and if you go to the grocery store you can actually buy a can of sockeye salmon. Wow. Now, the Atlantic salmon, there is, they are still wild caught, but most of the Atlantic salmon are farm raised, which means that they actually have pens that they hold them in and grow them to a certain size and then harvest them. And so usually the salmon filet would be much bigger and much broader than what you see here because sockeye salmon usually aren't quite as large as our Atlantic salmon when they're grown. Mm -hmm. They're a little smaller, so they're a little narrower through here. So they're not as easy to fillet, and they're also not as easy to skin, because the skin's a little thinner. But uh, salmon, salmon. Well, I see you used a big knife. What if I don't have a big knife? Well, if you have a pocket knife, you can, you can use it. I happen to have one right here. Oh, another one of those coincidences. Yes. So what you would do is you take and make a small slit near the end of the fish, mm -hmm. near its tail. Gotcha. And you're going to pretend like you're going to fillet this fish with this small knife. But as you can see, it's not, it's not big enough to do that. No, it's not. So then you're going to take your hand, you're going to pull this back out of the way, holding the skin down with the other hand, and you're going to take and press as hard as you can against the skin and the cutting board and you're just slowly gonna move this down. Whoa! Come on, you got it, you got it! Come on, come on, we got it! It's a team here, it's a team effort, we got it! I got the board, you got the fish. Takes a little more effort to do, but... Look at that, yeah! You can nice! Skin it, skin it with your hand. Skin it with your hand. Boy, so what you're saying is your hand comes in handy. Yes, it does. Okay, I like it. Yes, it, it. does. Hey, um, here. 
You can have your knife back. All right, so now you skin the salmon. So what do we do now? And they're gonna cook it over here, right? We're uh, gonna grill it. What are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna uh, fire. I, I thought we would uh, take it out and cook it on the open pit. You mean take it back to the fire pit? Yeah. We do have a fire pit here. It's a community fire pit. I've used it before. Cook talk dogs on it. And I think we will prepare it on. We'll cook it on a cedar plank. A cedar plank. And why do you cook it on a cedar plank? Uh. Adds a nice flavor to the fish. Get a little bit of smoke. Uh, just a nice way to nice. Well, also it, a nice display of the well, fish. What about the cedar plank? Doesn't that thing burn up? I uh, no, you soak it in water first. You know, like you did the corn. Remember we did like, the corn. Exactly. You soak it in water to make sure that it doesn't burn. So it doesn't. So you're not. It's, you're going to get the smell of the aromas coming up, but you're not going to get the burn. It's not going to light on fire. Well, if you want to go down to the community fire pit and take that and as long as uh, we don't get too many people coming up to us and saying hey can we have some of that because I don't think we have <laughs> enough for everybody I mean I'm, we barely have enough to, for both of us I mean I'm gonna eat like a one and a half of those all right <laughs> to the fire pit okay go oh, grab the fish <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, what's all the racket? Can't a pickle get any sleep around here? Hmm, something smells fishy. It's making me so hungry. Why is your board so shiny? Uh, well, after you soak the cedar plank in water overnight, you want to oil the board so that the salmon doesn't stick to the board. I see. How do you know it's hot enough? So you can put your salmon on it to cook it. Well, the easiest way to tell is you sort of feel the back side of the board. And if the back side of the board's getting almost hot enough to start a fire, it's probably the fire is probably hot enough. And the fact that you touch it means it's not quite ready. Well, I have cook's hands, so a lot oh. of people go, whoa! But I don't do that because my fingers are numb to heat pretty much from grabbing hot things. For years and years and years so and years. So that's a chef's thing. That's a chef's thing. And I see we're getting smoke, which is fine. You know, I like the smoke. It's just nice. And now we're going to put on the salmon. And how long should it take before that salmon cooks? Uh, according to how hot your fire is, uh, it shouldn't take very long. Dan, what exactly does the plank do? After you put it in water, cedar gets a real nice smell to it. And those smells, as the water comes out, steams out of the wood, that smell translates into a taste that your salmon gets. So it's real nice. So nice it adds, adds to the taste, flavor. Right. Adds to the flavor. And of you the got fish. the smokiness going on. Now, that can, is correct. can you use another type of plank to cook your. Uh, you, know, you could use maple. Uh, you know, you're going to get a different flavor because, once again, you still want to soak it. You could use maple, you could use oaks. Oak is usually too strong for fish because it's because of the tannins in oak. They're, they get really strong flavors. But you could use oak. You could use hickory. You know, there and are you, a lot of different get, planks that you could use. I happen to like cedar. Where do you go to get the planks? You can go to your local lumber yard. Really? They can cut a slab off of a board or they may have pieces, little pieces that are left from somebody saying, well, I only wanted eight feet and they ended up with a two foot piece off a 10 foot piece. I you see. can buy those. Pretty reasonable. And what we need to do now is we really need to take all this steam that we feel coming off that plank and we're going to take our pan and we're going to put it over the top and let it sit there and basically cook. Steam and cook. You could also just put it on your grates and I like that. that I like the plank thing better because now you don't have to clean the grate. It's easier to clean, that is for sure. <laughs> and how many times can you use a plank on an average, you think? Oh, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 times. Really? Oh, yeah. If it's done properly, it shouldn't burn. You might get a little black scorching on the back side, but it, basically the water is going to keep it from burning. And that's the whole idea of soaking it is to, one, to get that steam, those flavors to come out into the fish, but it also saves the plank from from 
basically burning up like your wood is. It's just chars, so to speak. So I got a question for you there, Scott. One more, if you don't mind. Oh, I don't, oh, I don't mind. How long are you going to hold that salmon? Uh, well, I was thinking that myself. Um, though it feels nice in your hand, you know, I probably could use a pan. A pan? And a spatula. A spatula. And probably a towel to wipe my hands off would be nice. And a towel? Yeah. That so would you're, be saying, you're saying we came down here unprepared? No, I came prepared. You came unprepared. <laughs> well, let's just pull me out. Oh, that's right. I can't pull it out of my vest. I'll be right back. No, I don't have one in my vest either. Hold so. that thought. Don't ah. have one in the coat. I'll get it. Okay. Spatula. Super. Towel. Great. And I know you want the pen. <laughs> Thank you very much. There you go. You know, I hear that salmon is also very good for you. Yeah, it has omega-3 oil in it, which is supposed to be one of the healthy oils that you can eat. Omega-3 oil? Omega-3. Yeah, I need to get myself over to Dr. Blake's here pretty quick. I'm well overdue for a, a yearly medical examination. Speaking of health. All right, here. How's that feel? Oh, kind of cold. I like it, though. I think it killed something. Well, this is the one that looked real bad. Oh. This might tickle, so don't move your back foot. All right. Oh. How's your paw? Is it moving? Oh, yeah. My foot, yeah. <laughs> that should take care of them ear mites. All right. So why don't you put this back oh. there on the table for me. All right. And lastly, I'm going to check your fur for parasites. So All right. grab that parasite right. comb there. That Alright, well, I know what a comb looks like. Alright. It's the one with a wooden handle. Boy, I'm glad you came in with all these problems you got. Uh, well, Thank I you. guess you're right. I ain't getting a little older, and I guess I should make this a yearly vision. Alright, we're going to be looking for some bugs. Alright, here. We, looks like we got your uh, common household flea. Get rid of that little guy. Or gal, I should say. My hunches will probably find a deer tick or a lone star tick or something. Oh, nasty. Oh, here we go. Oh. It's actually a brown dog tick. Oh. Nasty little bugger. All right. I, you know what? I, I think we're all set. Well, it looks like it's about done. It's getting kind of smoky. Well, yeah. We'll take a look. Take this off. Oh. Whoa. Look at that. Woo look at that. That's what I'm talking about. It's going to be a little smoky. I need to put a little salt and pepper. A little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. Nice. Nice. Take our spatula and our cloth. Pick, the, pick it up. Oh, yeah. oh. All right. I would just take the spatula and loosen it off on the plank here. And yeah, we still got one more to cook. Well, we can eat this one before we cook that one, right? That's Whoa, right. Oh, yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Ah, oh, we didn't bring any forks. Uh, okay, well, now what? Oh, I... Sure you don't have some in your pocket? Oh, just grab it. Let's just, what do we do? Uh, you, I'll take one half and you take the other half. Okay. All right? All right. All right? Ah! <laughs> hey, my half! I like it. You said you like it. You're gonna uh, eat one and a oh, half, so look at the and look at the pink. Mm. Oh my gosh. Boy, mm. that's good. Oh. It's called roughing it. Oh man. Salmon. What is that name again? What is that word? Anadromous? Yeah, whatever he said earlier. <laughs> that's what this is. And it's a great fish. It's a good eating fish. So we're going to eat it. And I want to thank you for coming by today and joining us. And uh, make your own salmon and, and have some. It's great. And do it on the grill. But when you do it on the grill, make sure you got more coals and less fire. It works better. In the meantime, I hope everybody out there has a great day, a great week, a great month, a great year. And I look forward to the next time we all get together on the Children's Corner.
This All right, is this is great. I love it. Oh, dude, look at that pink. Look at that. You're not looking. Where do you go? We're gonna go to the children's corner. Tell me where do you go?